hands down, the best thing that I've ever made with acorn flour. And I gotta be honest, the greatest thing that your home cooking keister will ever taste made with acorns. In all seriousness, I just love this recipe. This is my acorn flour tort. What we're doing here is we're gonna take a little bit of milk or half and half, mix that with maple syrup, and then we're going to add cold leached acorn flour. You need to use cold leached flour here because you want it to stick together. You could probably do it with hot leached acorn flour and some acorn starch, but I don't have the proportions for that. Add a pinch of salt. Basically what we're doing here is we're making kind of like thick acorn polenta. And this is inspired by Castignacchio, which is a cake made out of chestnut flour. And you could actually use chestnut flour here as well, but it will be more sweet. Now, this cake is very lean. That's why I call it a tort. So we need to get some fat in there. So we're going to beat in a little bit of butter by hand. You could also do this in the stand mixer. And just make sure that butter is thoroughly incorporated. Now we're going to put it into the stand mixer, and mixing it in the stand mixer, you're going to see I am going to beat the living daylights out of this tort batter because we need to cool it down a little bit before we add the eggs. And it's also going to add some air into it. It's going to get really, really light and fluffy. It's going to add some volume, but that is kind of what you're looking for. And I can almost see a little bit of fat separating out. So... That will go away, don't worry, as it cools down, I added a little cinnamon, and there is vanilla extract made from gallium triflorum, my wild vanilla extract, and see how I just keep beating this and beating this, mostly to just decrease the temperature a little bit. So now we'll add a little bit of baking powder, our leavening agent, make sure to scrape down the sides, and just keep going. Now we add the eggs, and it's important we are adding each egg singularly, waiting until it is completely absorbed before we add the next egg. That's what it should look like. It's going to get nice and fluffy here. Boom, add an egg, wait until it's incorporated. Add an egg, wait. Add an egg, wait. Add the last egg, and now we're going to beat it a little bit more for good measure. That's what you should look like. It should look a little bit like runny cake batter. And this is kind of like cooking a cheesecake. Very similar, because you want to actually kind of like undercook it a little bit. Uh, it's because it's better if you don't overcook it. Grease a uh, springform pan. I like to use a little bit of butter. You want it really well greased there. And then we're going to sprinkle it with sugar. You could use turbinado. You can use white sugar. It's going to help it not stick and add a little bit of sweetness to the outside because this, this is not an overly sweet dessert. It's maple syrup, acorn flour, and not much else. Bake it and don't overcook it. You can put a pan of water in there too, just like cheesecake. You see, it kind of looks like a cheesecake. Now, very important here is how we slice it. You just went through a lot of work harvesting, drying, cracking, and leaching acorn flour, so you don't want to muck it up. Uh, but you can see I had a case of LaCroix in my back seat and it slid onto this when I was bringing it to my family gathering for Thanksgiving. Yeah, isn't that great? But for slicing, the most important thing here, we're going to mark off the slices. You can get 12 slices from each springform pan and you wipe off the knife after every single solitary cut. If you make a cut, you wipe off the knife blade. It does not matter. Every single time you have to do that because look at how perfect that slice is. If you just start hacking through it and, you know, just cro magneting your way into slicing this tort, it's not going to look great. A little bit of creme fraiche, and that is a wonderful thing. It's kind of got the texture of a firm cheesecake with the flavor of coffee cake. It's great for breakfast with a cup of coffee, great for dessert. Honestly, this is great anytime. If you have not made this yet, you definitely need to make it. The recipe is in my book, but the full recipe is also on my website. Thanks for watching.